Hello again everyone. It's been considerably less time than usual. Oh, not. Uh, I'm writing this today after the Wukong video, you're just gonna have to bear with me. So I got a great comment on the Wukong video by Zelothor, or Wizard at Large, who talked about using him as a weapons platform. Which is a great use since you can have two weapons out at once with his clone. And he's got a great video on it as well that you should check out, it's linked in the description. But it also made me want to show off the weird as fuck weapons platform frame that I use. Now if you've seen my other videos already, none of this stuff is particularly new. But it does completely eliminate the need for Tenokai, which cancels out all the work I put into my last video because apparently I hate myself. So melee crescendo can be triggered by Bladestorm, which makes it viable at rank 2 with how easily you can stack up kills, but this will also feed back into Bladestorm, since every stack of your combo counter will increase its damage by 25% up to 300%. This is a massive boost in damage when you remember the only other things that scale its damage outside of ability strength are Steel Charge, 2 Arcanes, and a Helminth Ability Augments, Radiant Finish, and Savage Silence. But this also means we're going to want to throw Bladestorm out quickly at the beginning of a mission to ramp up our initial combo counter with melee crescendo, so we want to put on a bit of power strength. I'm using Umbral Intensify and Transient Fortitude, which gives us 99% extra total power strength at the cost of 27.5 ability duration. We aren't using Blind Rage because I'd also like to have some efficiency on this build. Now, you can use Streamline, which is fine, but I like to use Fleeting Expertise. This brings his ability cost down so low you can easily offset all of his energy drain by just equipping Energy Nexus. At only 2.4 energy per mark target, you can easily be gaining more energy than you're using. This also causes an issue though. How are we going to sustain invisibility when our duration's so low? At that amount, Smokescreen only lasts one second, which, from my understanding, is a perfectly average amount of time. Well, we're going to put on Prime Continuity to bring it up a tiny bit, but we're not doing that for the Smokescreen. Instead, we're going to offload our invisibility to Arcane Trickery, so that Bladestorm has a 15% chance of turning you invisible when it kills. Now I know what you're thinking. How much cocaine does this guy do before recording to talk this fast? <laughs> I'd appreciate if we could stay on topic, we're talking about Ash. Since Arcane Trickery is being used to activate invisibility, but being invisible reduces the cost of the Bladestorm, there's a break-even point somewhere where the initial investment of using Smokescreen is worth the reduction in operating costs for Bladestorm. By plotting this on a graph, I can take the intercept of the two lines to find exactly where that point is. This graph shows us that the breakeven point for Blade Storm is at 5.83 enemies, or 6, since we want to get parts of enemy after using the ability. With a 15% chance of activating Arcane Trickery over 6 instances, there's a 62.3% chance of at least one of those kills setting it off. So if it doesn't activate, the game's just being bullshit and you should auto for it instantly to train it to give you better odds. Anyway, back to the weapons platform part. We added on that duration earlier so we could take advantage of the buffs and debuffs we can apply to enemies. For Ash's normal abilities, we can get Armor Strip from Seeking Shuriken and a multiplicative 150% critical chance with Smoke Shadow on all weapons. Smoke Shadow's buff doesn't scale with power strength for some reason, and it only applies on Smoke Shadow's invisibility, so Trickery can't activate it, but it can be cast over the top of it. It'll also apply to allies, but we don't give a shit about them. Now you might think only having 5.4 seconds for Smoke Shadow's critical buff is too short, but since it only costs 13 energy, it'll refund itself with Energy Nexus before it runs out. So you just spam it whenever you need it. Now we don't need Teleport anymore, so we can Helmet it off, and replace it with an additional buff. Now I suggest- wait. Do you hear that? That's the list of shit I don't fuck with alarm. Someone scroll down to the comment section to leave a comment about Nourish or Breach Surge. <laughs> Let's see what you've won. It's a free flight! Down the stairs. Just like with Wukong, I want to stay on brand, so I'm going to use Wrathful Advance to give a second critical buff to melee, while also retaining some kind of teleport for extra mobility. Wrathful Advance's teleport will also reset your aim glide and bullet jump, so you can fly around like Zephyr with it. So now let's focus on our melee weapon for a bit. I use the Venkus since it can hit the elusive 13 times combo multiplier, which will give you a 325% damage increase to Blade Storm. And if you use it with Blood Rush and two Gladiator mods, you can get an additional 720% multiplicative crit chance. I also have the Sacrificial set on since this is a crit weapon and these things are basically mandatory now. So on a Wrathful Advance heavy attack with Smoke Shadow, my Venkus will do 740 4.6% critical chance, and 616.6 on a normal attack. Now for secondaries, you can use whatever you want as long as it has a moderate crit chance, since we can use secondary outbursts with that permanent 13 times multiplier to take advantage of a constant 260% multiplicative crit chance. Now for this example, I'm going to use the Sepulchrum, because it hits like a fucking tank, and those micro missiles are so good, oh, I love those micro missiles. Anyway, the Sepulchrum has a base 30% critical chance, and 38% on its alt fire, so when combining Creeping Bullseye and the additional 13 times combo secondary outburst, that can bring you up to 168% critical chance on your primary fire, and 200 13% on your old fire. And when you combine that with Smoke Shadow as well, that brings you up to 213 on the primary fire and 270 on its old fire. And since this requires you to swap to your secondary to refresh the buff anyway, you might as well also use Vigorous Swap. Unfortunately, there is a slight gap in this build. The only way for any of this stuff to feed into your primary weapon outside of the Smoke Shadow's crit buff is to use something like Melee Dexterity to benefit from your melee capability. So we're going to fill that hole by putting a second weapons platform in here. So I'm using the Dreading Carnon with Hunter Munitions, which works fantastically well with Ash due to his passive increase in the effects of Slash procs. On top of this, I'm using Longbow Sharp shot on it. Since this wave passes through enemies, I only have to hit one of the heads in a crowd in order to buff the next shot I do, so it's super easy to maintain. The important part of this setup though is making sure we achieve over 133 standing critical chance, which I've done by using point strike and taking the fourth evolution perk Survivor's Edge to increase my base critical chance by 10%. Hitting this amount of crit means we can use Hunter Synergy on a companion to activate Tenacious Bond. This will give all of our weapons an additional 1.2 times critical multiplier. Tenacious Bond can be activated by conditional critical chance increases such as Smokescreen, but I prefer to have it always active. Yeah, that's right, I'm going to start talking about companions and set mods again. I know 
know what you fuckers are into. For companions, I'm going to use the Pharaoh Predacite. You can use the Ardazic Havat to take advantage of the Cat Eye's critical chance buff, but I don't like repeating myself and I wanted to try and find something new. Anyway, I'm going to use the Mecha Set on the Predacite, which means every now and again there's a chance I'm going to hit a marked target and casually set off a second nuke that procs in a 22.5 meter area. I've got Mecha Overdrive on my companion, and you can use Mecha Empowered if you want, but if you prefer some extra damage off Bladestorm and it's no skin off your nose to use Steel Charge instead. Then to round off the Hunter's mods, I'm using Hunter Command to make my companion a bit more consistent about attacking enemies. And with that 13 times combo multiplier, we can get a 390% damage increase from Camden Mod when we use a Heavy Attack or Wrathful Advance, which you can then be combined with Mold to bring it up to 2,492.8 damage in Slash alone. This is also combined with a 55% critical chance and a 40.4% status chance thanks to Hunter Synergy and Mecha Overdrive. But Smoke Shadows will also apply to your companions, so it can bring it up to a 70% critical chance. We can also take advantage of the Pharaoh Predacite's 100% Toxic Damage buff from Anabolic Pollination. This effectively functions like adding a 100% Toxic Damage mod to your weapons, and will combine with any elements that are already on your weapon. So if you have Pure Cold on your weapon, and you run into Anabolic Pollination, it'll actually convert your damage to Viral. Or if you already have a combined element on it that uses Toxic, it'll feed into that element. And finally, for survivability, I'm using Covert Bond since it can be activated by Bladestorm. Enough said. The final two slots on your companion are flexible, but my usual options are to use Frost Jaw to convert the Toxic Damage from Anabolic Pollination into Viral, and then to use Contagious Bond to add a third potential nuke to the build for fun. Adding on that cold will bring your Predacite's total damage up to 3,988, but since Anabolic Pollination will apply to your Predacite, that will convert the cold damage into Viral damage, bringing it to a total of 6,481 damage per hit. Anyway, that's the build. It's kind of confusing how everything feeds into each other, so I made a graphic rather than trying to explain it and condense it all down at the end. Anyway, I'm going back to my massive pile of cocaine, I'll see you guys later.